Genshin Impact has a lot of characters, and I wanted to make a video on the top 10 that I would recommend if I was starting a brand new account in 4.0. I want to take all the regions into account. I want to take all the characters into account. I have a different account that I've built, some of these ones that I haven't built here, but I would make recommendations based on a few things. Strength, fun factor, versatility. There are some characters, like Hu Tao, that are universally loved, that I personally... Okay, well, maybe I would recommend her. But personally, I would never get Hu Tao because I think she's boring to play, but she's extremely strong. This is going to be a biased list, but I'm going to give you 10 characters that I would personally build if I was starting Genshin again. So let's get this out of the way. Some of the initial 4-star characters are quite a bit stronger than new 4-star characters, especially with constellations. Sucrose becomes insanely powerful. Xingqiu is almost as good or even better than Yelon in some situations. Shangling hits like a goddamn truck, and at C4, she becomes this goddess, this pyro archon, and Bennett is the best healer and support in the game. These four units can be built and slotted into multiple different teams. You could use Sucrose on Electro teams, you can use her on Fire teams, Hydro teams, it doesn't matter where you're using Sucrose, she provides a ton of value. Xing Cho, he can be in Hyper Bloom teams, he can be in Vape teams, he is insanely powerful, would recommend him anywhere. Shang Ling, once again, very versatile, she can get thrown into so many different teams, she can work with uh, main DPS Hydro units like Child, and, um, and, and she can be the main de damage dealer essentially. Just amazing. And with Bennett, Bennett just makes everyone better and safer, and it's, like, impossible to die when you have Bennett on your team. So these are four units that I would recommend every player build. Uh, they may not be on the banners uh, right away for you. You might not have copies of them, but if you have copies of them, build them. This video is sponsored by Astra, Knights of Veda, a brand new dark fantasy RPG with multiple different classes for you to try out, bosses to fight, quests to enjoy, and one of the coolest art styles I've seen in a while. I really like the gothic look of a lot of these different enemies and bosses. It's got a little bit of gore to it. Poison. Magic. If you're interested in trying something new, click the link down below. There are multiple bosses to fight with multiple different classes, all with different abilities in battles inspired by classic beat-em-up video games. There are cutscenes and story to enjoy, and whether you're playing on PC or mobile, there is cross-platform progression so you can play anywhere. Click the link down below to wishlist Astra on Steam. Also, there's going to be some news dropping August 23rd to 27th at Gamescom, so stay tuned for that if you want to learn more about Astra Knights of Veda. Next four characters that I would recommend are Nahida, Raiden Shogun, Yelon, and Kuki Shinobu. The reason why is once again versatility. You can use Nahida in Hyper Bloom comps, you can use her in Vape comps or Melt comps, there's different comps that you can use her in, but Nahida just brings a lot of damage passively. She is constantly bringing value to the team, and I'm a very big fan of Nahida. She's also a character that, when Hyper invested into, becomes absolutely god tier, one of the best units in the game, and can carry you through any content you ever find. Next up is Raiden Shogun. Now, I have Hyper invested into my Raiden Shogun. I have her weapon. I also have her two uh, constellations, and this gives a lot of damage. So I have built a DPS Raiden Shogun. But you can also use something like the uh, Dragon's Bane, which gives Elemental Mastery, and you can equip her with all Elemental Mastery stuff and make her extremely good in Hyper Bloom. You use Nahida and Shang Li or Shang Cho, or Nahida and Yelon, and all of a sudden, Raiden Shogun is procking all of the Hyper Blooms and doing 20, 30,000 damage for each of them. She's insanely good at, at making it work. I would highly recommend... Um, you use her one way or another. Like, I don't care which way you build her, she's still going to be good. She provides an insane amount of energy for your team, so even if everyone else doesn't have enough energy regeneration, they'll still be able to use their burst almost constantly, and I'm a very big fan of Raiden Shogun. The more I've played with her, the more I've fallen in love. Yelon is Xing Cho, but a lot nicer to look at, and she is very fun to play. 
Her E ability is one of the most fun abilities in the game. You tag all these enemies, you run through. It's good for exploration. And I'm actually trying to get C1 so that I get two uses of her E ability just for exploring. I think it would be worth it just for the, the speed uh, of exploring the game and, and doing quests. I think that overall she is incredibly good. And one of her talents here, the Adapt with Ease, gives your team a bunch of damage built in. As you're fighting, your character starts doing more and more damage, and she can proc this while she's off-field, which means you swap to her, use her abilities, and then pump the enemy with the DPS unit, getting up to 50% more damage. That is crazy. She works in Hyper Bloom. She works in, in, in Vape Comp. She works everywhere and is highly versatile. The next character on the list is Kuki Shinobu, built with Elemental Mastery and as much HP as you can get. The idea here is to use something like this Event Sword or the Iron Sting that gives you Elemental Mastery, and then she pops off. You want to give her all artifacts with main stats of EM on her cup, her goblet, and her timepiece, and realistically all of these other substats hardly matter just having em in all these slots and using her in a hyper bloom team will allow you to beat the spiral abyss even the 12th floor on one of your teams you just need something like nahida or even dendro traveler it will be enough damage to clear it the reason why is because she is an electro unit and this sanctifying ring will constantly swirl around you and it will constantly proc all these hyper blooms. So while you're attacking with other people uh, and getting it going, she is just passively blowing everything up and it's fantastic. And she fills the healer slot so you can run other damaging units while she slowly heals your team. My Kuki Shinobu is not invested in. Her talents aren't even really leveled up, and she is still an absolute carry for my teams. She makes the game trivial, and I would recommend you put some time into her. You don't really need constellations. Constellations can help here and there, uh, just with like the duration of her abilities and some extra damage and stuff, but for the most part, just one base copy of a maxed out Kuki Shinobu is enough to beat the game. Kazuha is a high priority unit in my opinion. He's one of the best characters in the game. And while there's someone like Venti who's an awesome animal archon, I think Kazuha is one of the best characters in the game, period. But he's a 5 star unit and not everyone is going to have him at this moment in time. And it might be until summer until you can get him. Now, Kazuha can shred the defenses and the elemental resistance using his Verdescent Venerer set, and he can boost up your elemental damage based on the swirls that he does. He can be thrown into almost any team in the game and make them better, and he hits shockingly hard. Build him with a bunch of elemental mastery, and Kazuha pops off. I would recommend him to anyone who plays Genshin Impact, and he can be hyper-invested into if you really want to to get some pretty cool stuff going on. He can give your team extra EM, he can get an extra charge, essentially, of his, uh, of his E ability, and he's just really fun to play. Like, he's just really fun. Next on the list would be a healer or shielding unit. If you've already got Bennett, you're covering kind of one of your teams, but you need some way to keep your other team alive. Diona does both, and I think I would recommend her to a lot of free-to-play players because she's pretty easy to build and brings quite a bit of value. Zhongli, not everyone's going to have, but his shields are insanely good. And then Layla, because if you did the recent events, you can get a free copy of her. She can shield your team as well. But if you're a free-to-play player and maybe you lost a 50-50, you might also have Jean. Where's Jean? Jean is also a really good healer. She can shred some defenses with her Verdescent set, and she's an option as well. But you're going to need some sort of healing unit. You could also build Chi-Chi if you desperately need to stay alive, or you could use Barbara. So this is a, a, a slot where you need something to keep you alive, and it doesn't really matter which one you invest in. You can usually only take them to like 50, 60, maybe even level 70, level up their weapon, and they're good to go. One of the nice things about someone like Barbara is she's a Catalyst user and can use a three-star weapon called the Thrilling Tales of the Dragon uh, Slayer. Uh, it's on my Kokomi right now. This three-star item is insanely good support unit uh, piece. It makes all your teammates hit harder, and uh, it has HP percentage, which lets you heal more. So I would recommend you build a healer. But 
Kokomi is probably one of the better healers because she's Hydro, which means she can work in Hyper Bloom teams, and she's overall the best healer uh, in, in a lot of comps. She can work in Freeze comps, and, and she's definitely a very solid unit. And so I wanted to show her off last, but I wanted to give you a few different options on kind of shielding and healing units. But now that I've played with Kokomi, she's not the most flashy fun thing, but she is very effective and keeps a lot of my teams alive. Between her and Zhang Li, um, I think it's pretty close, personally, like, the way I like to play. Um, I, I think Zhang Li can fit into a lot of the teams as well. But his Geo just isn't as effective as the Hydro. The Hydro, uh, it brings a lot to the table, and you can use her um, in... in, in maybe a more effective comps. I have a couple other quick recommendations depending on who you've got on your account, but everyone has the Traveler, and I would recommend you invest in the Dendro Traveler. The Dendro Traveler can open a lot of Hyper Bloom doors, and if you're a brand new player, someone who just started the game, you can sprint to Sumeru, unlock the Dendro Traveler, and you can kind of beat the game, like, easy. Like, super, super easy. He is amazing uh, for Hyper Bloom in the early game. And while a normal Genshin player who's just starting can maybe do a few hundred damage, using Dendro Traveler and creating a Hyper Bloom with like even just like Barbara and Lisa in the very early game can do 5,000 damage relatively quickly. It's shockingly good. And uh, you can kind of stomp the game in the early game with Dendro Traveler, but even in the late game, Dendro Traveler is a very solid unit, and uh, when you get all the constellations, like, he pops off. He boosts up his damage, he boosts up your team's uh, EM. Just a god-tier unit overall would highly, highly recommend. And now for a few honorable recommendations. Now, I've got Ayato here, but I want to be crystal clear. You could slot Tartaglia Child into the slot of Ayato and have a very similar experience or even a better experience. Child is very good for a lot of comps and um, maybe even better than Ayato. But I just wanted to put like a five-star Hydro guy here because um, they can be pretty good to throw in your teams. I just don't know how many Primo Gems you have and how many characters you have unlocked. But I wanted to uh, shout out Child or Ayato as, as an option for you, especially if you have a cool weapon for them. But what I did want to recommend is some of the um, the free five-star units, or not free, I shouldn't say free, the characters you will most likely get over time losing 50-50s. So Tainari is crazy. Tainari is very good. You just don't ever get a chance to get him off of a banner. If you're a new player, the only way you can get this guy is losing your 50-50. And so... I can't recommend, oh, just go get Tainari, because you might not have him. But he is very good, and I would recommend you build him. He uh, he can bring a lot to the table. He can work in quite a few different comps. And he just, yeah, he just hits hard. If you get Constellations, he really pops off. And uh, I'm a big fan of Tainari's overall damage. Um, and he's he's let me clear certain Abyss. Official, I could have easily slotted in some of the other teams. But I'm finding currently uh, that I'm, I'm not using her as much as, like, as some of the other units I'm recommending. Um, I feel like Fischl is crazy. The new artifact set is very good on her. I would recommend Fischl, but I just like, maybe wouldn't prioritize her as much as some of the other units personally. And that's just the way I play and the way I, the way I like to do all the reactions and different things. And like, I could replace um, Fischl. Like I, I, I put Kuki Shinobu on the list cause she's a healer and she can do the hyper bloom stuff, but they're both Electro units. They're both four star units. Like. I think they both bring different value. I just I just kind of put Kuki above because she heals and it it fills multiple slots in a team. As for Kaching, once again, I don't know if you're going to uh, get her ever because th there won't be a banner. But Kaching is very strong, and with the changes to Dendro being added into the game and like um, the quicken and aggravate reactions, Electro got a lot better. And uh, I I am absolutely stomping the abyss with Micah Ching. She feels so powerful, and she is fun. She is so fun to play, and that is part of the the experience of Genshin. I would recommend Kaching any day of the week. D Luke, everyone memes on him for being power crept, but once again, if you get a D Luke and you build him, he will hit really hard. But people always joke that like, yeah, he does hit hard, but he's not as good as Shangling. Fair enough. That, that's fair enough, but I can do 100,000 damage with my burst ability with him. He can clear the abyss easily. He is decent. Okay, so another thing I wanted to say quickly is, 
You can build Hu Tao, God tier. Xiao can be God tier. Eula, God tier. Xiao, any five star DPS that you build will pop off and do really well. Uh, Ayaka is another very popular character that when you build her, she can blow teams up. She she can blow up the abyss. Any five star DPS that you build will be able to carry you through the game. And I very highly recommend uh, building support units that can make multiple teams work. All of the DPS units are crazy in their own way and they've got these really cool abilities. But support units allow them to function and work even better. So I, I definitely value kind of the, the Xing Chos and the Shang Lings and the Bennets more than some of the DPS units because I can use multiple different Hydro DPS and win. I can use multiple Electro DPS and win, if that makes sense. So those are my recommendations on some characters that I would build. There's obviously going to be way different opinions out there. And if you think that someone that I missed... So those are some of the characters I would recommend you build. Obviously... <clears throat> So those are some characters that I would recommend you build, but obviously everyone's going to have a different opinion. If you think that I completely missed something here, I, I needed to talk more about Ayaka or something like that, let me know. State your case in the comment section down below. Maybe you'll help someone out with your opinion. But this is just my thoughts on who I would build if I was starting a brand new account in 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And make sure to check out Astra, Astra down below. Uh, it's a brand new game that's coming out. It looks really cool. Thanks so much for sponsoring the video. See you soon. Bye.